What's up everybody? Welcome to Rex Engine. In this video, I want to show you guys a really, really powerful feature of Rex Engine that I honestly haven't talked enough about up to this point. And that's the ability to give your character different Rex controllers to make them behave in totally different ways under different circumstances. So you can think of a Rex controller as basically all of the things that give movement or abilities to your player. Um, so if you're, if you're moving around, if you're running, if you're jumping, if you're climbing ladders, all of those abilities and their movement properties and their animation sets are all bundled together in one Rex controller. And so one of the really cool things about Rex Engine is that any individual character, if it's the player or an enemy or whatever, they can have multiple Rex controllers at the same time, or not at the same time, but on the object at once. Only one can be activated at a time though. And so you can use that for things like, um, in the demo for example, I use that for swimming. So normally the player walks on land and he's got one set of movement and one set of animations and one set of attacks. And then as soon as he jumps in the water, everything is totally different. So it's not just that swimming is an extra ability, it's actually a totally different Rex controller. And so everything the player does underwater behaves almost as if he was a different character. And that's because it's a different Rex controller. And then later on in the same demo, the player earns the ability to fly. And when they're flying, everything is different again. They have totally different attacks. Um, they behave differently. They move up and down with the up and down keys rather than by jumping. And again, it's the same character, but it's a different Rex controller making them feel and look completely different. And so in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about Rex controllers. And the example that I want to use is maybe the most classic video game thing that was ever video gaming. And that is how Mario, when he gets hit by an enemy, he shrinks down into like tiny Mario, which is like, I don't even want to think about what, what is the lore behind that? Is there lore behind that? What? I, I don't even know. And then when he eats a mushroom, he gets bigger again. Um, and so we're not going to think about that too hard or like why that is, but we're going to implement it in Rex Engine. Um, so to start out, I've got this scene, it's um, because I love making these like painstaking one-to-one -one recreations of levels. Um, this is, I guess it's missing a few things, but this is Mario Bros. 1-1. Um, I'll probably release this at some point, maybe just online, because I can't bundle these together with Rex Engine um, for copyright reasons. Um, anyway, so I've got this character who, this is our version of Mario right now. And I'm going to run forward and hit this enemy. And when I do, we can see that he shrinks and turns into Tiny Mario, or Tiny Booster, or whatever. And so the way we set that up, if we look under the player's object under controllers, he's got two different Rex controllers here. He's got the regular controller, which by default, this is going to be on every new character you make in Rex Engine, so this should already be there. And he's got one under it that I called Mini Controller. You can call that whatever you wanted, but since he's the miniature version of the character, it seemed appropriate here. Um, and you can see the game object for the Mini Controller is deactivated at the start. Just the regular controller is activated. And also, if you look under the player, under, under the player's component, it's going to be Rex Actor, or if you've overridden that with your own script, um, it's whatever extends Rex Actor. If you look under that, under slots, they have an option here for their Rex controller, and this is whichever Rex controller they start with. So in this case, he's starting off with his regular larger version, and so we have that slotted there. Um, so let's, let's disable that for a minute, and let's just look at the mini version. So if we look at this, let's zoom in on that. I haven't changed his sprite, so it's not going to look different yet. Um, but the mini version is basically, it's mostly all of the same abilities, the same physics properties, although you can change those as much as you want to make it behave as differently as you want. Um, it does have different animations are all slotted into the animation slots, so that's going to make him look differently for all his animations. Um, and also, his collider size is about half as tall as the regular collider size. You can see this one is 0 0.915, and his collider size is 1.83 ordinarily. 
Um, so the way that I made the mini controller here was actually, I just copied and pasted. Um, I took the regular controller, which was on there by default, just copied it and pasted it right down there. Um, I left most of the properties the same, and then I just slotted in different animation clips and changed the collider size. Um, so really, nothing complicated there, just standard Unity copying and pasting. Um, and so the real magic here is going to come on the player, on the root game object here. Since you've got two controllers now, and it's how do you set them up so they, the different ones come into play at different times. So the way to do that is you go onto the player component, and there's a whole section here called damaged properties. Um, and that includes things like if they're going to flash when they take damage, if the screen shakes, um, if there's hit sparks, if little damage numbers pop up like an RPG. Um, and at the very bottom here we have damaged controllers, and this is where the magic is going to happen. So if I expand that, there are two different slots here. There's one for a regular controller, and there's one for what we call a damaged controller. And these are basically two different Rex controllers that can turn themselves on and off to swap between them whenever the player's hit points drop below a certain threshold, which you can define here under HP threshold. Um, so for the purposes of this being Mario, this character only has two hit points, because that's how Mario works normally. Um, he's got the big state and the small state, and he can only take one damage in each of those. So what I did here is I set it up so the HP threshold is one. So what that means is whenever your character's hit points um, become either become one or well, so if, if his hit points fall down to one, he will change to the damaged controller. And that all happens automatically in Rex Engine. So as soon as he takes damage, if he goes to one or below, he changes to this mini controller we've slotted here. And then the way the regular controller works is that if his hit points go back up above this number, so if they go back up to two or anything above that, then he swaps back to his regular controller. So what we should see then is the inverse should also be true, is that if we, if we take damage, he should shrink. And then if I grab this turkey leg on the right and make his hit points go back up, he should revert back to his normal size. So let me demonstrate that really quick. Um, oh. And I had the regular controller set to inactive still. Okay, so if I take damage, we're gonna shrink. And this guy is just adorable, by the way. Like, oh my god. Look at that face! And then if we click, or if we uh, jump on this turkey leg here, that puts us back up to our regular size because our hit points went back up above the threshold we set. Um, and so that's really it. This is a pretty simple thing. Um, it's, it's very complicated behind the scenes, but Rex Engine is doing all of that heavy lifting for you. So really, all you need to do is make two different controllers and slot them into that, uh, that damaged controller place right here. And it's also a very similar thing, by the way, for swimming. Um, just to point that out real quick, because I mentioned that earlier. Under water properties, there's just two different controllers. Um, and there's a checkbox for will change controller in water. So if that box is checked, it'll know when you go in water and it knows when you leave, and it sets the Rex controller to be the appropriate one at the appropriate time. Um, so that's it. You can do some really, really powerful stuff like that. And uh, yeah, like I was saying, I mean, you can do things like have, if you wanted to go completely nuts, you could have just completely different types of characters inside one character. So if you want to have like, I don't know, if you were making like a Transformers game and you wanted to have one character that could be like a more typical video game character and then transform into like a fighter jet. That type of stuff is all super easy to do right out of the box in Rex Engine. So at any rate, I hope that was helpful and I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.